from Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering Veritas Vision 2017. Brought to you by Veritas. Welcome back to the Aria in Las Vegas, everybody. This is the Cube, the leader in live tech coverage, and we're here covering Veritas Vision hashtag Vitas Vision. I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. Bill Coleman is here. He's the CEO of Veritas. Bill, thanks for coming on the Cube. Good to see you. My pleasure, thank you for hosting us. Well, you're very welcome, and so hot off the keynote, uh, how do you feel, how's the show going for you so far? Well, I'll tell you what, I feel Veritasum. <laughs> Veritasum <laughs> is, the, is the watchword here, <laughs> the crowd talking Veritasum. I loved that you started out with a, a little retrospective from last year, you used the term digital twin. We love that term, and you said it's sort of grown up now. I like to think the digital twins are sort of in their adolescent or even teenage years. The data is sort of, out of control, um, you know, we're not hearing today a message of legacy backup, we're hearing a, a, a vision of the future. Talk about that and what that vision looks like. Our customers obviously need data protection, they need resiliency, they need everything they've needed in the past, but that's not what they're interested in. That's assumed, that has to work. What they're interested in is the power of information. We like to say that our mission is to harness the power of information. And it's what's called digital transformation. Being able to use all that data out on the internet with all of their data to change how they do business, to change what their, their products are, to change their supply chain. It's all about machine learning, predictive analytics, and the power of information. So, I started in this business the same year that Veritas was born. And so I saw the ascendancy of Veritas and the you know, many different forms that the company had, had taken, but I used to use Veritas as an example. You want to be like Veritas, with no hardware agenda, you want to be the glue that brings things together, and I saw in the, the, to the conversation today a little bit of, sort of, of BEA-like thinking, um, the, the binder, if you will, binding clouds together, I mean, my term, you guys didn't use that term, but to us, that's a critical value add, and it's all around the data. You guys talked about digital business. To us, digital business means data, and it yeah. seems like we sort of share that, that common belief. Absolutely. You know, we've called this the information age for 50 years, but it's not been about information, it's been about technology. We finally have the ability to address that information and do it over the internet, everywhere and everything. That's really what our vision is. You know, at BEA, we saw the internet emerging and the world had to distribute and take advantage of all that power across the whole world. And we invented that. But the key was, when I came up with the first concept of BEA in 93, I said, you know, by the year 2000, the network is going to be the computer. The network needs an operating system to make it all work. Well the concept here, and the reason that I actually took this job, is looking ahead 10 years, everything's going to be about information. Uh, no organization's going to be able to exist without leveraging the power of that information. Because that's the only way they'll bring their customer the value they need, that's the only way they compete, without it, their business are just going to go down. Yeah. Bill, how are customers going to leverage data? You, you mentioned it's about the information, it's not about the technology, but you know, I look at customers. They've had storage people, they have network people. Uh, you know, oh, I'm excited about containers. We spent the last 15 years focused on virtualization. Is it chief data officer? Is it you know, some other structure, the customers? How are some of the you know, leading customers that are going to be able to adopt this? How are they changing to be able to leverage that, that data and information? Well, first you have to understand, the technology has, has been complex, hard to use, hard to manage. You know, as we saw earlier in the keynotes, it's like building a Rube Goldberg device to get 27 different software products and 14 different hardware products to sort of work together. Well, that's all disappearing. With cloud and the internet, it's becoming like a utility. You just subscribe to it, so that goes away. Now what you have to do, what we have to do, is we have to give the, them the tools that they can easily, visually, look at that data, determine what's in that data, be, uh, be, be, be maneuvering it, move it around, like in the movie, uh, 
Minority Report. Minority yeah, Report. Yeah. And <laughs> literally, the things we talked about today, the demos we showed, can lead to that. With, it, with machine learning predictive analytics, our biggest customers are already investing billions of dollars to do that. Because they know if they don't jump ahead, their competition's going to do it. It's the power of information. So one of the things I, I might take away today was not only is Veritas hardware agnostic, but in many respects your workload agnostic. In other words, what I mean by that is a lot of the events that Stu and I and theCUBE goes to, the, the enterprise companies are talking about on-prem, uh, and, and that's where their business is, and much of your business, of course, is, is on-prem, but yeah. we heard a message today of, we really don't care where it lives, we want to be the innovator uh, uh, to help you get value out of your data no matter where it, it lives. Now, a lot of people will say that, but you really don't care where it lives, is that, is that true? And we can't, look at, data's not just in an enterprise's data centers anymore. That, they're using clouds. Our, we've surveyed our customers, our average enterprise customers using three public clouds already, and they have dozens of SaaS applications, like Salesforce, Workday, ServiceNow. Their data's in there too. That's really complex. What we've done is we've taken and built the products that run in the cloud, across the cloud, to and from the cloud, all by one policy orchestration. So you don't have to think about any of that. We, you can discover the data, categorize the data, manage the data, and analyze the data, all from one interface, end to end. So the, obviously hard, uh, the, uh, the obvious hard question follow up is that is what gives you confidence that the cloud guys, once they get that workload, aren't going to just sort of usurp that agenda? What do you have to do to, to maintain that customer delight? Well, the first thing is the cloud, the public, sir, plug, public cloud providers are our very close partners. You know, the first month we started this, Bill Voss, who heads storage for AWS, and I worked with him at Sun, you know, came down to us and said, look, our customers need backup. You know, it, snapshots are great, but if somebody deletes a snapshot, it's gone. Your data's gone. How are you going to protect that? How are you going to analyze that data? and we want to partner with you, so we've partnered with them. But the other thing he said was, and if we do it exclusively, the enterprises aren't going to use us. I had the CIO of one of the top five banks in the world tell me right after I started this, we've got to be using three clouds simultaneously. We never want to be stuck in a cloud. So the cloud service providers know that the enterprise customers want and need that and demand that portability. And we become their, we're the premier partner for Amazon, for Microsoft, for Google and for IBM. So it's relationships, but it's right. also innovation. Right? Absolutely. So talk about um, where you are with R&D. You've purchased by a private equity company. You probably might have heard the narrative beforehand. A lot of the old private equity model is to suck all the cash out. Kind of the new private equity model is to invest, grow the valuation of the company. I think that's where I, I see you guys going. But talk about how you're able to innovate Talk about the R&D mojo that you guys have. You had several questions there, but yeah, let me start with that, with the, la <laughs> the last one. Uh, when we carved this company out 19 months ago, uh, it became apparent that we weren't a real player in the cloud, we weren't in some of the more modern workloads, and we had to change rapidly. Mm -hmm. So, we created a strategy that led to this whole 360 data management integrated platform, software-defined storage, integrating it with a you know, a RESTful API interface. And then in one year, we built seven new products from scratch that operate in the cloud, on-prem, or across cloud. Automated that entire thing. We literally took the startup mentality. Now I've been a startup guy most of my life. I spent the last five and a half years before this funding early stage startups. And the thing is being agile and moving fast. We can move faster than anyone around now. We're a big company. Let's take CloudPoint. We just introduced our Cloud Snapshot. Mm -hmm. That was a thought in somebody's eye in February. We defined what we needed to do, working with our customers, we put together the team, we built a microservice end-to-end -end architecture, and we shipped it supporting the major, all the major Cloud Snapshot capability. 
in five months, end to end. Totally new product. Now that is a startup mentality. Yeah. Bill, can, can you explain to us a little bit some of the internal plumbing and how you, how you manage that? On the one hand, you know, Veritas, trusted company, strong engineering culture, uh, you know, product like NetBackup, you know, 15 years, you know, leader in its, in its space versus, you know, brand new stuff, whole new spaces, you know, what's, what's staying the same, what's changing, how do you manage some of those transitions because, you know, typ typical company, it's like, you've got 7,500 employees, it's like, well, I've got revenue streams and product lines that I know how to do and can keep chugging, but I've got the new stuff too, so how do you manage that? I internally? have a very simple yeah. philosophy of what it takes to lead a major company. You got you to have a direction to go in, you'll have to grow, hire great people, and you have to organize around the first, the first two. But the key is, where are you going? Where's the puck going to be in five to 10 years? And I call that the three Vs. What's the vision of where the market's going to be and how you, ha and, ha and number two, what's the value that brings to customer? The value that will justify their switching costs. And the third is, what are the values that you build your company on that customers and partners will be able to trust and account and count on? That, so, when you start with that, we created the vision. It has to be a compelling and urgent vision. 10 years from now, all of our products are going to be obsolete. They're going to mostly be obsolete in five years, all of our traditional products. It's all going to be a microservice change on the fly. Customers never have to upgrade kind of environment, right? There's an urgency there. And customers want to transform. There's an urgency there. The key is, based on your values, you have to develop a culture that embodies the norms to execute your strategy. And then you keep those things in balances. The cultural change has been the most profound and the most important thing we've done in this company. And this company now has a startup win in the marketplace customer first culture. So, so you laid out the vision. Uh, in terms of the value to customers, you said when you talk to your CIO customers and other customers, three things came out, cut, cut costs, deal with governance and compliance, and then help us with the digital transformation, help us become a digital business, essentially. Yeah. So, those two are pretty clear. Talk about the, the values that you espouse. W what are they? So, when you start with, uh, values have to be built around what you're providing to a customer. And there's sort of three aspects of that. I'm going to be, give them the best possible products, I'm going to give them the lowest possible price, or I'm going to give them the best possible service that they can count on. I'm asking our customers to bet their future, so it has to be the third. So it starts with, cut, we produce customer value, right? Then, you know, the next aspect of it is, they have to believe that what you're doing is going to be there for them, that it's going to really work. So our next one is, we're going to do that by inventing the future to bring them the customer value. We're not going to look back and, and try to add features and functions to where we are. We need to help them jump ahead to where they need to be. The third part of that, the pyramid there, is customers are going to rely on you. So trust, accountability, ethics, integrity, that, you know, those three things come together. Then, we're all about employees, right? So how do you empower employees to succeed, grow, and be accountable, right? Um, and you put these values together, and the values will never change. The culture will evolve as strategy moves, and, and keeping in balance means you're going to have have to reorganize when, on a continual basis around where you are in your strategy. I told this company, we're going to be reorganizing continuously, at least once a year. We're about to, we're about to do a pretty fundamental reorganization in parts of our company, and this is the second time in six months. But you, ha you, know, you have to be an agile organization. Bill. The venture community thinks that this is a hot space. There's a whole number of startups, highly focused. Obviously, they're smaller um, than you don't have the breadth of, breadth of products. What, how do you look at the, the, the marketplace? What, what do you say about kind of you know, you know, that, that aspect? 
Well, I, as I said, I spent five and a half years in early stage venture. Yeah. We had the highest return fund for our first fund of, of multiple of any venture capital company. Um, I really love that world. Venture capital is the, the center of invention, the center of innovation in this country, in, in the world. You know, back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, you have to have these big corporate labs, you know, Bell Labs, Sarnoff Labs, et cetera. They don't exist anymore. It's all done by these. So they're inventing the future. Now, what's ha the difference between the pre-dot-com era and after is the vast majority of startups are acquired. Well, the vast majority or fail. fail. <laughs> the, the vast majority of what's left are acquired yeah. and a few go public, right? So to, to me, Number one, they are the laboratory. They're in the areas that we, that are emerging and that we don't necessarily have a core competence. We want to look on how to do that. At BEA, in six years, I did 24 acquisitions to build the company. I never acquired anything that came to us. It was all, here's part of our strategy. We need this competency. We need this time to market. How do we make it work, right? Matter of fact, there was a joke, BEA stood for built entirely on acquisitions. <laughs> <laughs> well, people used to, Larry Ellison himself used to uh, denigrate people for writing checks, not code, and then of course he changed the software business with <laughs> some big checks. Uh, um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about the team. So, um, when you took over here uh, at, at Veritas, you mentioned off camera you started with the team. Um, how did you go about that? You know, maybe describe, add some color to the team. You know, like I said, one of the three pillars of my management is hire great people. And if you're going to transform a company, if you're going to do a turnaround, it has to start with a leadership team, period. You can't start anywhere else, but you have to have a leadership team that shares the vision, shares the drive, knows how to work hard together, and when they walk in that room, there's not one thought about my organization or my career or my compensation because they all know if we make this work, all the rest can take care of itself. Now, when you're doing these sort of things, there are certain times and certain organizations that people's skills are optimal. Uh, you know, the group that was managing this at a, as part of Symantec, um, they weren't necessarily the, the best people to manage it as a change in culture, change in strategy. So I had to go out and, and I brought in a couple of folks that I've worked with before. We brought in some real amazing people. Mike Palmer is just unbelievable at all dimensions of product development. Scott Genero, he knows sales back forward. He knows every customer out there by name. He's, and he knows how to really motivate a sales force. Well, every member of my leadership team except uh, Todd Hochschmidt, the CIO, has, ha, has come in with the same vision, the same, you know, and of course that works down the organization as you're building. And that's how you change the culture. With that, here's the vision of where we're going, here's the values, what we are going to do, this is how we're going to lead it. So major objectives, obviously you want to keep moving fast, I presume you're, gonna, yeah. you're, you're re reorganizing frequently to, 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 to support that, but what are the main objectives that we should be looking for as sort of outside observers over the next six, nine, 12, 18 months? We, need, we, we are changing the agenda of the information management industry. Uh, the first place is, for digital transformation, corporations have to switch. They have to get off what they're doing today, ultimately, and go to something new. And in an enterprise, that can only be one platform. You can't have two platforms deleting, moving data asynchronously. So, it's going to be a major transformation. Now, that has to be a platform. We've put the stake in the ground. We have that platform. Now, this is our, this is our battle to lose because the incumbents in a transformation get to win if they're good enough. You know, in the disruption, only a startup can win. That's how I won at BEA, how we won at Sun. But this is a disruption. Nobody's going to throw away all their data centers and jump into somebody before who said, oh, I've managed 100 terabytes, give me your 50 petabytes, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and no customer's going to trust them. <laughs> so this is our battle to win. We're changing the entire agenda with 360 data management. 
what we, our, our number one challenge is we have to change the positioning in our own customers' minds because they know us as the 30 years of that legacy backup recovery and archiving company. And it's really working. But that's, that's number one, that's my number one objective. Because the rest will take care of itself. And as a private company, uh, do you feel like you're in a more advantageous position to do that and, and why? Well, I don't think I could do this as other than a private company because it changes the economics dramatically. Also, at the same time, we're switching from mostly licensed revenue mm, to, to mostly rateable mm. revenue as we move to subscription. In a public company, that's a, oh, our revenue's going to go down for a while, and so is our profits, and, but trust me. Hang you know, with us. Yeah, <laughs> hang with us. There are companies like Adobe that did that flawlessly, but it's not yeah, an easy not thing easy. to do. And I'll tell you, I have the best partner in the world. When, I, when we started this whole carve out, and I figured out, whoa, we don't have the right products, we got to build this whole thing. I went to Carlisle with the strategy and the vision of what we needed to do. And I, and I said, look, because pricing pressure is so high, we're not going to be able to grow based on, on your plan, how you invested. But if you want me to do that, I can do it, and you need to invest this much more. But I recommend that we invest as fast as we can to get to digital transformation. They chose the third. They chose to, we're spending 99 million more dollars in R&D and, and go to market this year than was in the original plan. You, I wouldn't be able to do that in the public markets. Yeah. You know, but they are, they are the perfect partner. They build for growth. They stay in two to four years after an IPO. Their return is based on multiples of growth and that's what we're, so our goals are totally aligned and aligned with what the customers are going to need. Bill, great story. I know you're super busy, a lot of customers to meet, but so thanks very much for taking time out and joining us on theCUBE. This has been a pleasure, thank you. You got me all you're stimulated. Welcome. All right, good deal. <laughs> all right, keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest. It's theCUBE, we're live from Veritas Vision 2017. We'll be right back.